Hey guys, Justin and Katya from Riot Night here, and we'd like to welcome you to Emo Cocktail Hour. You probably know us best from our emo parties that we throw in Phoenix, Arizona. In lieu of everything going on and until live music returns again, we thought we'd help you stay tipsy by teaching you some delicious cocktail recipes and chat about our favorite bands. I'm a professional mixologist, and I've created these cocktails inspired by our favorite bands. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's make some cocktails. Welcome to another episode of Emo Cocktail Hour. Today we're doing a drink called Pretty Lush, inspired by the band Glassjaw. The cool thing about this drink is actually the base beer is Angostura bitters, which is usually a, an ingredient you use like two drops of in Manhattans or Old Fashions, things like that. It's really considered a seasoning of a drink, but we're using that as the base. The other thing about this drink is it's actually a tiki drink. Essentially, this is, it's called bitters, it is bitter, and every other ingredient in the cocktail works to balance it. So we need a little bit more booze. This is boozy. We're gonna be using uh, Jamaican rum, Navy Strength, Smith & Cross. It's not cheap. It's not cheap. It's not expensive I, I bought it. Run. I also made some um, coconut simple syrup. We've got some <coughs> lime and we've got some Whoa. pineapple. So if you think about it, these are all tiki flavors and really yummy, fruity, acidic, and then ango. Is there anything special about this particular rum? Like why this one? This one in particular is Jamaican and Navy Strength. We want this drink to be boozy to stand up to all the basically sugar and acid we're adding. It adds a wholly unique flavor that's different than no, yeah. if you were to use a spice rum or a clear one. So Jamaican Navy Strength, it's higher ABV. So it's just a really powerful flavor on its own. That's why I was wondering, because you wanted specifically a Jamaican rum. Yeah, extra boozy, extra funky. Extra boozy and extra flavor, funky. Yeah, but that's we're... my favorite thing. That's, that's super glass job. Head yeah. So if you've watched me bartend ever, you know that I do the most expensive ingredients first, not because it's a good habit, but just because that's how I memorize recipes. Angostura bitters isn't particularly cheap. So if you don't want to go buy a bottle just to use most of it in one cocktail, I won't blame you. But if you want to try this, it's really freaking good. So we're gonna do an ounce and a half of Angostura bitters to start. The Smith & Cross, we're only doing half an ounce. It's really just reinforcing the bitters to kind of bring it up to about two ounces of booze. But two ounces of Ango would unbalance it. With our two ounces of pineapple juice. See, that's why I like this one, it's pineapple. It's super good. But I feel like that's a drink this. I'm gonna drink that. That's basically, that's, when you make it, I'm gonna swap it out. <laughs> this is a homemade coconut, toasted coconut simple syrup. Basically, it's gonna be coconut, sugar, water, and toasted coconut it's flakes. It's so good. We're doing an ounce and a half. It seems like a lot of sugar, but because it's not a simple syrup, there is the extra coconut uh, milk. And then we're gonna do a whole ounce of lime juice. We just need a good amount of acid uh, to stand up to all the really bold flavors that are in here. And that's basically it. Lime, pineapple, coconut, rum, and angle. <clears throat> what you know about these? They look cold. Good call. Good call. <laughs> Is there something special about them? Well, no, they're just like I have special ice molds. They're, oh, they're, they're I really good size ice I thought but... we had more going on here. <laughs> oh, wow. Bruh. Oh, yeah, look at that color. So pretty. It's like blood. What the fuck? Is that what color your blood is? <laughs> yeah, it's my blood color. Gross. <laughs> you nasty. This is the best ice in town from where it oh, was yeah. from. So, oh yeah. Uh, if you don't have a pebble ice machine, you gotta go to Sonic. It's like really... I went to QT last time, that was a mistake. You fucked up. I fucked up. QT ice is not the same not as Sonic ice. Not good for this. Oh my god, I right now. You what? What nothing. I'm not being weird about this drink at all. Okay. I'm not doing anything weird. So let's talk about this garnish. What's, why is this... Why are we doing dehydrated pineapple? Typically any garnish should have some connection to what you're putting in the drink. If you're just garnishing with something that's not there or doesn't serve a purpose. Got it. It's, it's like a mint wouldn't make any sense. It, well, actually it would, and we're gonna put a little bit in there, Dang. and I'll tell you why. I'm gonna throw a dehydrated Dang. lime as well. And if you think about it, we've got pineapple, we've got lime, right? I would send this drink back because it's super messy, so. And like, <laughs> it gets sticky all, all over my hands. Okay. You love these. Oh yeah, this is cool. poke her eye out with them. Okay. A couple pineapple so fries. So today for the glass jar drinks. <laughs> we are gonna do a little bit of mint, and here's the reason why. In general, tiki drinks use utilize mint a lot, and it's for the aroma because what you smell is so much of what you taste. That if you can get a lot on the nose, it just adds. Oh my god, it a smells bit so good. Yeah. So yeah, we got pineapple, dehydrated lime, dehydrated. I'm sorry, pineapple fronds and mint. And that's part and of the this, whole experience. Like I'm supposed to whiff it. Yeah, and absolutely. Sip it, right? If you can be getting a smell while you're tasting. Again, so much of what you taste senses. is what you smell. So mint really just has a, it's got a great aroma. What's this? 
Those are tweezers, so you don't have to use my dirty ass hands when I'm touching oh, cocktails. Oh, please, thank God, I love tweezers. All right, <laughs> don't want your dirty ass hands in my drink. Am I trying this? Yeah, try it. Okay. So, so this is honestly, honestly one of my favorite cocktails. Yeah. I would, whenever I would make this at work, this was on my menu. And we put Angostura Holy first. As, um, Don't be drunk when you order this. Because it's the main ingredient. But people would read pineapple, coconut, lime. I'm gonna use two hands. They'd order this and be like, it's bitter. It's like, yeah, it's an Angostura bitters cocktail. It's so good. Thanks, man. No, it's really, really good. good. I'm not lying. <laughs> I'm not lying. Does it remind you of Glass Dry yet? <clears throat> Okay, uh, cool. I'm gonna make her another one of these and we'll sit down and chat about, we're gonna talk why, about some glass job. why I did this. We're gonna talk about some glass job. Let's chalk it up. So I thought okay. we'd start off by talking about Pretty Lush, why you chose that name, that track off of everything you wanted to know right. about Silence. Normally people think of like Glass Jaw, they think of Worship and Tribute. So yes. why this particular record? So first and foremost, everything you ever want about Silence is not only my favorite Glass Jaw record, it's one of my like top five albums of all time. Like. I'm obsessed with it. With Glass Shot, being a worship and tribute, like, listen. How much listener, were you into that record? During that time, other artists that came up, I probably know way more, like, front to back records, but, like, with that record. But you're familiar with it. Do you, Cosmo Blood Loss, you know, like, Tip Your Bartender, um, Eight sure. Dose Mill, like, songs like that. Like, I know them. Yeah. I don't know every single song on that record, sure. but they <clears> do stand out as, like, nostalgic to me. I grew up listening to it. It was one of those albums that I bought during that time. So it does, sure. and we do play it at Riot Night. One of the things that I noticed with that first record that you love, Daryl's voice is kind of, there's no like in between with his vocals. So you either like really like it or you don't. And it gives me like Blood Brothers vibes too. Yeah, I totally, I totally right? see that. I think they toured together a lot. And Daryl Palumbo just with Head Automatic and just everything he's done, very Blood Brothers. Super cartoony, S. like over sings, like. Yeah, especially with Hide Automatic, it's dramatic. It's really right. dramatic music. You, you to do with me. Yeah. Um, and not to say that everything you ever wanted about Silence isn't, but Daryl's what makes that album for me. Um, the thing is, he is such a unique vocalist, and Ross Robinson was like, hey man, let's talk for 45 minutes about how miserable you were, let's put you in the headspace, and I'm just gonna hit record and let you exercise your demons. So explain a little bit who that is, first of all, like as a producer, okay, so, Ross Robinson. So Ross Robinson, I mean, he's most famous for like Corn and Limp Bizkit and... New metal, right? Like, well, like yeah. Like 2000s new metal. Big bands are like Slipknot, Corn, like, well, like what are his bigger artists? Like, yeah, 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 Corn. Yeah. Um, I mean, most recently he actually just did the new Touche More. If you ever watch the old Corn DVDs, he produced corn self-titled there's like video from behind the scenes of jonathan davis being in you know in the recording booth you've heard the record the last track the end of it is jonathan davis bawling yeah turn into a fucking psycho mocking freak and there's nothing they can do to touch you there's a video of that and it's documented and Ross Robinson's in the studio kind of talking in his ear just putting him in that place to just hit record and go. So you think that was an intricate like thing of pulling the record I, out of Daryl? I like. do. I reverse engineer my drinks. I don't start with the ingredients. I start with the name typically. I knew I wanted a glass jaw and I knew it had to be the first record because it's me. It was my menu. It's tropical and pretty lush. It does kind of like give that. <clears throat> doesn't it kind of feel like a pretty lush? Like, I don't <clears throat> know. So here's the thing. It's pretty. Obviously the, yeah, the garnishes really and yeah. Angostura bitters is 44.7% ABV, which is stronger than most vodkas and whiskeys or whatever. Yeah. And then there's Navy strength rum. So like the name, or the word lush in the title, yeah. it's a boozy ass drink using Angostura bitters. To me, the bitters is Daryl. It's not for everybody. It's very bitter. It's very like in your face because of the rest of the drink balances it out, which is the production, the funky bass, the yeah. The really kind of bright guitars, which yeah. to me is like the pineapple juice. And then Ross Robinson to me is the producer of this record and it's that coconut. It's that thing that just holds it all together, achieves the balance between the juices and the sugars and everything else. And just it just makes it yummy, even though it's so different and just in your face. That's really cool. We actually were talking about nostalgic music the other day and the band Edema came up. And you're like, man, this is class. Oh, I remember this, this is great. That one record was huge Right. So the first time I saw Glassjaw was actually at OzFest 2002, I think. 
and here's where I saw them from. The line to get an autograph from Edema. Because I didn't know Glassjaw oh, yet. Shit, that's so I was crazy. a kid and I was at that's I was so at weird. Ozfest. That's so funny. And I was at Ozfest to see System of a Down and just just to be at a festival. I've never that's been. So funny. We were looking for a headliner for one of our third to last shows and I brought up Daryl because um, obviously he's an iconic like emo post hardcore front man. Like during that time, People like know. super nostalgic. People Everyone know. knows him, right. respects him, like he's it's Daryl Palumbo. So um, I brought it up and you were like... I didn't think shit. he'd do it. I mean, these the, what we do yeah. with Riot Night, what Emo Night LA does, Emo Night Brooklyn, it seems very nostalgic and very just kind of fun and loose and yeah. What's I, so I, funny I, about that was is that like literally that week after I brought him up and you said, I don't think this dude does this kind of shit. He's kind of weird. Two days shit. later, Emo Night LA, He's we have Daryl Palumbo. DJing like, like head automatica songs like Glass Jaw and he did like some My Chem. And I sent it to Justin he's like, holy shit, he does it. Let's fucking reach out to him. So. I reached out to him. We got a price that worked. It wasn't a money thing, but it was some sort sort of like a last minute cancellation. Something happened. We can we couldn't make it happen. But we, we had him, somebody like, else. We literally had him, and it would have been really cool to have. Like I hope once shows get back, yeah. we can we can reach out again and get him. We didn't get that, but one thing I did get. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, was I, I, was gonna, I was gonna go into that. Yeah. We had Jeff Rickley from Thursday come out uh, for Right Night, which is to me one of my favorite guests we've ever had. He, they always send us their their songs that they wanna they wanna play for their set. And, and we kind of and, said it. Yeah. And Rai Rai song from Everything You Ever Wanted About Silence was on it. And I was so excited and we're just kinda of going through the night and he's like, dude, no one's gonna know this song, like let's just skip it. Yeah, I was yeah. like, this is one of my favorite glass show songs, we're yeah. fucking doing this. So yeah. Jeff Rickley and I basically karaoke Rai Rai song to a silent crowd. Like, but it's, nobody knew cricket. But to me, Crickets. getting to sing that song with yeah. Jeff from Thursday. Right. I probably sounded like dude, too, but dude, that's Ryan not in my life. Ryan I swear. Ryan is a <laughs> show, so like regardless, you did a great and I think that's a great story to always have a memory to have. So So the recipe's in the description. Like it, try it, don't we don't. I guess. I don't know. Don't drink it. I don't care. Whatever, man.